Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Way that we can not only live in this life with the presence of God, but we will spend all eternity in our home called heaven. Hallelujah, honoring and glorifying and worshiping God Almighty. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, give him glory. Thank him for your salvation. Thank him, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Though even man turned against you from the beginning and to take their own route, their own plan and their own way, Hallelujah, you still loved us and made a way that we can know your plan, know your purpose. We can walk in your ways and be pleasing in your sight. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, Father God, hallelujah. Father God, help us, help us. Hallelujah, that we might see and know. Hallelujah, that all the ways of man, all the ways of mankind are nothing but rebellious. Rebellion, rebelling towards heaven, rebelling towards you, rebelling. Hallelujah, towards your plan and purpose. Oh, Father, help us. Forgive us and help us, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your precious, precious Holy Spirit that lives in us, dwells in us, and upon us. Oh, Shavasia, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our life. Glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Shebavi Yasia. Ola de Sia to the Yasia to Bola de Leon Bavosha Vasaki Seviri and Davada de Shia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shebi Anamo Savi and Da Shikidi Yasia. Glory and honor and praise. Glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord God Almighty, the creator of all heaven and earth. Worthy, worthy, worthy. She binga to vosa vasevi andaba de shia. Hesi vi ando vola de shia. Nana 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 nasia. Tatabola de bala de seti ando vola de vada de sia. She vi ando vola de seti ando vosa kia sia. Damba se biamba so vi ando vasha vi sha vi sha vidi ando vada de sia. In Jesus' name, did she go so vi avasia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us your spirit. Hallelujah. Your spirit, the spirit of peace, the spirit of joy. Hallelujah. 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 You have given us the new wine whereby we, as your children, that you have made us, you have made us to be new, new wine vessels, to be containers of the new wine Hallelujah. And you made it very clear in your word that we are new wine, wine containers for new wine. But the old wine was made for old wine vessels, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Father God, you have come that old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are new in the spirit. And we have the new wine in Jesus' name, whereby anything that we need, we can receive from your precious Holy Spirit that lives in us. In Jesus' name, say, Holy Spirit, fill me to overflowing right now. Touch me fresh and new. I can do nothing without you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. How desperate we are for the spirit of the living God. That is the plan of God. 
Amen. That is the plan of God, that the Holy Spirit of the living God would dwell in us. Not just come and visit occasionally, but dwell. Dwell, 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 dwell. Meaning being in us always. To never leave us nor forsake us, to lead us and guide us and teach us, comfort us, counsel us. Amen. Because we're always going to need those things. Just when you get counseled and comfort from one thing, you wake up and you need com comfort and counseling for something else. Amen. That's why he, he never leaves us. Amen. We'll go ahead and greet one another and say, I can see you're more full than you were. <laughs> to follow after him, to do exactly as he has designed, whether it's where you live, where we work, who we associate with. You know, it's, it's funny when I look back and starting, I was in my mid-20s when I gave my life to Jesus. Never regretted it once. Hallelujah. That was a few years ago. Never regretted it ever. Amen. Hallelujah. For an opportunity to live and serve God, the living creator. He's always been there for me. Amen. And uh, leading me and guiding me. There's many things that he led me to. And there's a lot of things he led me away from. <laughs> Let me just say. He led me away from a whole lot of stuff when I first got saved. And he still leads me away from things. Away from certain people. It has nothing to do with the fact that God doesn't love everybody the same but um, when he finds somebody that's willing to live for him he will pull you away from people that will pull you away from him amen and um, and it's all it's a lot about influence the people that influence us and it's huge 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 matter of where you go to church because um, whatever is being taught there preached in the lifestyle that the people live will influence your life, will absolutely influence your life. Thank God he gave us the Holy Ghost. And if we're willing to do his will and walk away from what we think, um, he will lead us into greener pastures. And we will have tests and trials, but it's so much easier going through a test and trial knowing that you're in the will of God than, than the torment being going through tests and trials outside of the will of God. Amen. And if you didn't know that's didn't know that then considered you just learned something. <laughs> Amen. It's better to go through a trial in the will of God than out of the will of God. Hallelujah. So, let's open up our Bibles to Ephesians. God's word is so the it, the, the word of God, the word actually talks about itself. <laughs> It's like in third person, the word said. <laughs> you ever meet anybody that talks in third person? <laughs> well, in Psalms, one, I'm just reading this, but I'm having you turn to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. But it says in Psalms 119, 105, that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So just even... In that scripture alone, that the fact that God's word is a lamp and a light in our lives, the more word, the brighter the path, the clearer you can see. The less word, the, di the path goes dim, the light's dim, and you can't see. So you can be a born-again Christian and have the Holy Spirit. But to the level of word that you have in your heart and in your life is to the level of light that you'll have in your path. Amen? So it's very important, the word. The word, the word, the word, the word. It says in Hebrews 4.12, you could write these down for your notes. It says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Amen? So we could see right there how vitally, vitally, vitally important the Word of God is. Because the Word corrects, it rebukes, it encourages, and so it's a light to our path, 
you know, it separates in our lives those things that are kind of questionable. You know how we have questionable things? Oh, it's not really, doesn't seem bad. How many of you know there's a lot of things in this life that don't seem bad? How many of you know there's absolutely some things in this life that seem good to us, but they're not God? Just because it's good does not always mean it's God. Amen? And so we have to have a clear understanding of God's word to divide and separate those things that we think are good that are not God. They're just not God. Amen? So in Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse 15, scripture we've read many, many times over the years. Amen? It says, uh, 5.15, Ephesians 5.15, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. <laughs> Pretty funny that the Holy Spirit would have to teach the people of God that we should live wise instead of unwise or stupid or foolish. <laughs> they, uh, ignorant. <laughs> we don't want to be like that. We want to be wise. It says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. We are in more evil days. They have gotten worse and worse. You know, by the time God had made man, created Adam and Eve, and all, all, all those years, those thousands of years till they got to Noah, that God looked at mankind and said, they are so evil and corrupt, I regret that I ever made them. They just sit around, sit around thinking of ways to sin and get even more vile in their sin. And so he said, that's it, I'm wiping them out. And I'm wiping this whole batch out. But he found one man... One righteous man that was not um, entertaining, sitting around entertaining sin. And God spoke to him, and God saved the human race by one family. Amen. So we're all descendants of Adam and Eve, but more so we're all descendants of, of Noah. Amen. And, um, and then, that, then when you're in faith, you become a descendant of Abraham. <laughs> but just understanding how God at that time... Um, because of sin and, and the evil, corrupt hearts that cause others to suffer and children to suffer and, and the deplorable things that were going on, abuses that sexually and physically and emotionally that were going on at the time, that are going on right now on this earth. And so he said, the, the make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The, we live in an evil, evil time right now. So God wiped out the planet, and it re, except for Noah and his family, and it, it repopulated. And uh, as so thousands of years later, here we are um, again. <laughs> you know, then Jesus came, and now 2,000 years later, here we are, and men have again found every way to be evil and even sit around creating more ways to be even more vile and more evil. But in verse 17, it says, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Um, we, if we, you know, we always want to know what the will of God is. Well, a lot of people want to know what the will of God is. When you become a Christian, you should want to know what the will of God is. And God never tries to hide his will from us. It's written. It is written. It is written. And so the more we know what is written and do what is written, then God will get real specific with us about other things. It says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. So God made it very clear because the days are evil. So people were drinking. <laughs> It's, this is all, all through history. People do things, and it helps them. It helps them and aids them to even be more evil. I've never met anybody that just drinks for the taste. Eventually, it might be because of the taste, but it never starts out the taste. It always starts out because of a feeling. They drink because of the feeling they are going to get. They, People say, you know, Christians, it just relaxes me. Well, get the Holy Ghost. That's what the new wine is for. There ain't no wine like the Holy Ghost wine. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost wine don't stop. 
because when you have the Holy Spirit, the new wine, he brings the peace that passes understanding and joy unspeakable and full of glory with no regret, no shame. We are supposed to understand that in this hour more than ever, that we're not supposed to get drunk on wine or any other beverage <laughs> or any other drug or pill. We are not supposed to be have anything about us altered by something that comes from the world, but our, all our alter, alterations come from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen? Usually if you get your alterations from the world, then you'll have altercations. It'll end up hitting you in the back of the head. It says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. That means you start getting a little, a lot of people like, well, I don't, I don't drink it to get drunk. Well, you, I don't care what you're drinking it for. You're drinking it for a buzz. <laughs> you're drinking it for, <laughs> even if you're just drinking it on Anything that, that'll cause you to feel different by something naturally, amen? So, so God was, through his word, how important is the word? The word, the word, the word, the word, the word. We have the word, the word, the word, the word. And we've got to stick with the word, the word, the word, the word. And the word very plainly tells us that we're not supposed to get drunk or get a buzz or get any kind of feeling or whatever it is. From, from, from old wine. That's talking about old wine. There's old wine, there's new wine. Which leads to debauchery. That means debauchery just means anything goes. You start out a little bit and you think, well, you know, you know, whatever it is, whether it's sex and drugs and rock and roll, you know, it's the gateway to doing something, something else. Amen? Before you know it, you're talking the way you shouldn't, acting the way you shouldn't, doing things you shouldn't. And um, so we've got to be careful of that because God has something better. And that's why he said, instead. He said, instead. That means don't do that. Instead, do this. <laughs> they have these, you know, don't eat this, eat that. <laughs> don't have chocolate, eat broccoli. I'm like, I don't want to hear. I don't want to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how they tell you, don't do this thing that's not good for you. Instead, do this thing that's good for you, right? Don't sit like this because it'll hurt your spine or something. Instead, sit like this because it's better for you. So God said in his word, don't get drunk. Don't be drinking wine. Don't get a buzz on wine, old wine, that leads to debauchery, opens the door to every other kind of thing. Instead, do this, <laughs> Be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, songs from the, from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. These are instructions from God for every single Christian. It doesn't matter male or female, minister, lay person, you know, worker, uh, whether somebody's employed or uh, self-employed or home employed, it doesn't matter what we do. We go to school. It doesn't matter what we do. This is for all Christians. Don't do this, but instead do this. And when we are filled, it says that we, it doesn't say have a taste of the Holy Spirit. It says be filled, be filled, be filled. Like on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. How did they get filled with the Holy Ghost? Not running around town doing all kinds of stuff. They were spending time waiting on God. They were spending time in prayer, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. I'd venture to say if you go through the Word of God and find out where it talked about, oh, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were spoken other tongues. They were all spending time doing the things of God. They were either listening, let me just say, even with Cornelius, <clears throat> When, when Peter came to preach to him, and they weren't even, they were not Israelites. <laughs> they, when, when Peter came to preach to him and his household, that meant his family and his servants and everybody else that all came for, for just, they just came 
because of the direction of God to send for Peter. And when Peter came, they were all there gathered in one place, in one accord, just like on the day of Pentecost, and they were there to hear. Why? Because he, the, the angel told Cornelius, send for Peter because he's going to tell you something. So he was waiting to hear what Peter had to say. And so he wanted him and his whole household, his servants and everybody, we are going to hear what he has to say. It wasn't just a, it didn't start out a Holy Ghost meeting. They came to hear what Peter had to say. So when Peter came, and he didn't know, he just showed up. And then he said, you know, this angel came and told me to send for you. And he's like, wow. <laughs> he didn't have a sermon planned. He didn't have his iPad. He didn't have his notes. He didn't even have a Bible like this. He had the word of God in his heart. And he said, wow, I can see how God favors no man but loves everybody because God appeared to this man that sent for Peter to tell them something. So they were anticipating on hearing what he had to say. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost fell while he was preaching because the people were in anticipation of hearing something. And they heard it. They heard that Jesus was the son of the living God and that he died for all man. And they began to speak in other tongues. Somehow, before they actually uttered it, they believed in their heart that Jesus was the son of the living God. And when they opened their mouth, they were speaking in other tongues. Just like that. The whole, let me just say, because God said in his word the importance that they be filled with the Spirit. That's what God, the Holy Spirit, was speaking through Paul when he wrote this to the Ephesians. The same exact thing, exact, exact thing, same exact thing that Jesus told the disciples before he, right before he ascended. Don't leave without the Holy Spirit. I told you about him, that he was coming. They had no idea what he's going to look like. They're just all gathering in this one place, praying, waiting for somebody to knock on the door. Well, we know that the Holy Ghost don't need to knock on no door. If we invite him in, he's going to come in. Amen? Come in. Come in. Come on in. Amen? And so the understanding of the importance in, in when Paul wrote to the Ephesians, remember the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fully came, then Cornelius, he was preaching to them and they all started praying in tongues. And there's many times in the, if you look at the references about the importance of praying in tongues, speaking in other tongues. But it's not just about praying in tongues because I have a bunch of people praying in tongues and there's no power in their lives. It says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking, speaking to one another with psalms, <laughs> psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. We've got to get so full of the Spirit that this is, this is first nature. How far are we from what God had originally planned that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, the most that we can, we can't, I can't walk in love, we can't be nice, we can't be sh giving, we can't be generous, we can't be any of these things, but we can pray in tongues. But we're not doing anything else by the Spirit that we're supposed to do all of these things. And I would venture to say that when God wrote, be filled with the Spirit, he was just as serious when he said, speaking to one another with psalms, psalms hymns, and songs from the Spirit. <laughs> We just want to pick, well, we'll take out, we'll take the part where it says be filled with spirit and we'll pray in tongues. But that's not what he said. He didn't say be filled with spirit and speaking in tongues. He said be filled with spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit. That means the Holy Spirit has songs that he wants to sing to us. The Holy Spirit wants to sing songs to me. He wants to sing songs to you. He wants to sing songs to us. Let me just say, 
this is going to take some learning curve here and yielding to the Holy Ghost. Because he's not talking about praying in tongues. He's talking about, he's talking about psalms, hymns, and songs from the Holy Ghost. That means the Holy Ghost wants to sing you a song. He wants to sing us songs. You know, and, and you can just get alone and just start singing and let the Holy Spirit sing a song to you through you. Amen? And it says, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. That doesn't, we, we've gotten in such a place in churches where, you know, we have a couple songs that we really like, and I'm not, not saying anything against this, but I'm saying we need to add to it. It's not coming against singing a song that's scriptural, that stirs our hearts towards the things of God and opens us up towards the things of the Spirit. I'm not saying that's bad or wrong, but we need to add to it. And this is what we have to do. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. That means this is something that's new and fresh. Amen? Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. <clears throat> that's, that's an attitude of being filled with the Holy Spirit. He says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're filled <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit, you're not just going to go, you're just not going to be going around praying in tongues or in your, you know, sometimes people, the only time they pray in tongues is in private when they're just by themselves. It's not about that. It's about something else besides that. We do pray in tongues. We pray in tongues when we're by ourselves. We pray in tongues when other people are around. When we have, we have prayer here, we, what we do, we pray in tongues. We pray in our understanding. We pray in the Spirit. But we're also supposed to sing in our understanding and sing in the Spirit. Amen? And these are things we have to cultivate in our own personal lives. Because, you know, <clears throat> you know you can, we can do these things in church, but what, it, has to be, it has to be a lifestyle. It has to be something that we do. It's just like people go to church on Sunday morning, but then they don't practice anything all week long. They don't practice walking to love. They're not meditating on the Word. They're not in prayer. You know, they're just ugly all week long and then come to church on Sunday morning. And I'm talking about just cross the board, any denomination. And so God, God in his word had a plan how we should live. You know, just not, you know, hang on and go through a test and call on God because we're going through a test or a trial, you know, and hope to make it through it. Amen. <laughs> that's, that's not how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live in victory. Amen. So when you have a test or trial, you know it doesn't matter because you got the victory. You got the victory. Let's look at Colossians in chapter 3. <clears throat> My prayer is that the fire of God fall in this place. Amen. Catch you on fire, each and every one of us. A fire that can't be put out. Amen. Colossians in chapter 3. <clears throat> starting in verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. That thankful thing is everywhere, isn't it? Being thankful. Thankful, thankful, thankful. Sometimes I'm like, I'll find myself not happy about a situation, <clears throat> maybe a living situation, or happy about something in my life, and then I realize i got to stop thinking about what I'm not grateful for or what I don't like, and just be thankful for all the things and get my mind off of the negative side and get my mind back on the positive side. I just thank God. I thank God that he's taking care of me. I thank God that he's always been there. I thank God. I thank God that I have a place to live. I thank God that I have a vehicle to drive. I thank God. I just thank, and just thank God. Thank God for my family. Thank God that he's given me lots of people to pray for. <laughs> I'm not figuring out who to pray for. I'm figuring out where I'm going to get the time to pray for so many people that God has put in my life to pray for. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So it says, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, do <clears throat> whether a word or deed, do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. There it is again. Hallelujah. Admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, 
hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in our heart. There's just something, there's a big chunk of God's will that is not operating in the church. And if we want God and want God's will and want to do what God wants us to do and be where God wants us to be, then we're going to have to step it up and be filled with the Holy Spirit singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Amen. And making melody, making melody in our heart to the Lord. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Making a melody, just any kind of melody. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all you are. I thank you, Lord. I thank you forevermore. I thank you, Lord, and praise your name now and always and forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All you got to do is give expression from your heart and the Holy Spirit will take together with you and he'll sing. He'll give you words. He'll give you melody. Amen. You know, music, music was created by God to glorify God. Amen. Amen. Music's been around forever because that's something that God created. Amen. Now, let me just say, because we live in the world where Satan is the God of this world, he corrupts everything that God has done. He tries to corrupt mankind. He corrupts music. He corrupts money. He just corrupts everything. But we are going to take back what God has given us, and we're going to use it for the glory of God. Amen. Now, you can do this. Um, you, you might not want to, I, I wouldn't recommend, but you could experiment with a microphone if you <laughs> if you want to come up and experiment. There's no harm in that. But this is something if you just do by yourself, you'll find it a lot easier to do. Amen. To where it becomes a part of your life. Being filled with the Spirit. Singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. All day long, <laughs> all day long, doesn't matter if it makes sense to you right now, but you do it and you will see, amen, it brings happiness and it brings glee to your heart and to your soul, amen, <laughs> if not anything, if not anything, you just start singing, it'll bring joy for sure, <laughs> If you start singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, it will bring joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because why? It's all, those, all the things of the Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, that's, this is basically your lesson today, but it's also your homework this week. Take the time. Take the time to be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing songs, hymns, and spirits. These are not things that you should hear only. These are things that we're supposed to do. Can we see in the word? These are things to do. Amen.